What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Heading to my next service call, we have a ductless mini split system um, that's reported as Daikin. Customer thinks it's low in refrigerant because it's not cooling properly. Wants us to uh, recharge her and not worry about a leak. So let's go see how much truth there is to the dispatch as it was received to me in our CRM called House Call Pro. By the way, if you're still using paper, pen, and pencil to do your invoices for your service-based business, step into the 21st century and utilize a mobile dispatching, invoicing, and payment receiving app like House Call Pro that my company uses. Check out the link in the description box down below. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Mike? Yes, sir. Ralph. Ralph, pleasure Come on to meet in. you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, the issue I have here, I have this Daikin uh, system. Yep. Since 2016. How many? One, two, multiple? I got one here and this one here, the second. And the connection runs underneath the crawl space. Oh, so one outdoor unit and two indoor units. Right. Okay. And this is like a thing. how how old is this? Uh, twenty sixteen. Okay. So it's about nine years old. Any any repairs or no. service that's nope. been installed? We don't hardly even use it because we got so many doors we get cross ventilation. I hear you. And for whatever reason, this I I was checking it the system about a uh, couple of weeks ago to make sure everything was up to par. Started blinking. Is it a continuous flash or is it Yeah, a... it's a continuous flash and it indicates here that it's, you know, it's showing a fault in the system. Correct. So if you go to the remote. Yeah, we did. And what error you got? It's showing a UO, which means it says low refrigerant. Okay. So you see it gives you the beep, you go through all of the faults. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the low refrigerant. And has this ever occurred before? No. no. I always clean it. I went and checked all the, you know, whatever it was. But at, at one point, the unit was not indicating the fault. So when I had someone come in, Daikin had someone come in, whatever. Okay. They changed the motherboard. The, the whole electronic system because he wasn't even picking this up. Gotcha. What he was went, this? Uh, last week, week oh, and a so half ago. Is, okay. Yeah. So, so you had no error whatsoever. And they can send someone here or that whoever was here, they replaced the control board. Yeah, they recommended they couldn't pick up any and, error. So they said, oh, it's one of the chips. But then they said, replace the whole board. They okay. replaced the whole motherboard. On the warranty? Or uh -huh. was it on the warranty? Yeah. Okay. This is good until 2028. Very good. But what happened was now that we saw the fall. Yes. I was like, and the person that came here was giving me some outrageous price. Oh, to the point where he, it was better for me to buy a whole new system. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try somebody locally. Some people try to get, you know, try to get well, away with that. They see it and they basically think. So I said, look. So let's talk about this low refrigerant. Mm -hmm. I, I, what, what, what do you, you seem somewhat educated and mm -hmm. you seem somewhat yeah. mechanically yeah. inclined because yeah. you already dug deep yeah, into this. Yeah. Uh, what's your understanding of low refrigerant? Low refrigerant to me is that there's a leak. Very good. Okay. Right? Which I'm assuming. So don't yeah. assume anything. Yes. If you're okay. low refrigerant, unless someone took it out, uh -huh. right? It had to go somewhere. Right. So it's not it's not consumed like fuel in your car or need to be changed like oil in, in, in a motor, for right, example, right. right? It's a sealed system. Mm -hmm. So if it needs refrigerant, that means it's it's missing. Right. Now it's where did it go is the question. Yeah. So I'm I I'm hope it's not what I think it is, but you never know. But in a lot of these cases, it, it could be something outrageous. And I and I doubt I, I'll be anywhere near what probably you quoted because yeah, 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 yeah. it seems it seems absurd. But let's take a look outside, See, and I, and then I can tell you what I think right away, or we'll we'll actually confirm it's lower. Right? Did anyone actually confirm it's lower refrigerant? Uh, yeah, because they put the gauges on yeah, the gauges and what, did it and what happened was they put the gauges initially. They spoke to the tech support for Daikin. Yes. And they said that's within the borderline 
shouldn't affect the system. All right, let's go off the outside. So, unfortunately, I'm going to tell you this right away. Mm -hmm. Chances are the leaks are in the line set. Yeah. And that's because the insulate the, the, the line set that they're using, or they used on this install, is unfortunately prone to leaks. This line set that they used, and I'm just as guilty of it many years ago as well, mm -hmm. is not UV resistant, but it's also prone to leaks. The actual copper like... will get eaten out okay. by whatever. I don't even know, but I don't, I'm not a manufacturer of copper. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah, an yeah. engineer, but I can tell you this. I've had customers literally in tears, right? And engineers that are customers that are in tears because they, they put dye into the system. They, they thought they saw dye on an indoor evaporator, the head unit, right? Yeah. And they had me change out head units. And then we had changing outdoor units. And then, like, why the leak's still still there? And I'm yeah. like, listen, I told you, replace the whole system. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But it's, and it's the lines. So you are you are going to have to replace these lines. When, when you do that is a whole other question. Did BC yeah. Richard put this in? Yeah. Wow. 2016. Yeah, they just... Uh, yeah, interesting. They have started. So you have a crawl space? Yes. Okay. And does this go on the outside wall of the house too? Or they went inside the wall? No, no. It's, uh, outside it's not the in the open. Right, okay. right, right below. And this is that indoor head? Yeah, that's the one that... Yeah. Okay. So this So what one, would you like me to do right now? I want to see about maybe checking. Okay. The refrigerator that confirming that it still okay. is. What do your recommendations are? Because my whole point is this would be a cluster of... Fuck. In other words, if this doesn't work... It's a whole new system for me. Um, no. Or if, well, listen, based if on it's the price not, I'm if, if it's about. if it's not in the copper lines mm -hmm. called the line set, right? Mm -hmm. In a lot, a lot of cases, listen, the labor eats you up. Yeah, that's right. Good. It's not like we're in Podunk, Middle America, yeah. and the labor is forty five dollars an hour. Yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. So labor will eat you up. So if this was like a you know a twenty thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar central air system and it's fairly new in mm -hmm. age. And components are still under warranty by the manufacturer. Yeah, yeah you're still going to pay for labor. You're still going to have to pay for the refrigerant. But, you know, $3,000 is much cheaper than $10,000 or yeah. $15,000, right? Here you have two indoor units. You have an outdoor unit. And it's probably the lines. But yeah, the because, only way to find that out is to actually disconnect, pressurize, and then see what drops. Yeah. But let me get the tools yeah. and we'll see what's, uh, what actually is. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Be right back. All right, we took the access cover off. And that is showing us the two line sets going to the two indoor units. No oil residue on anything. So no leaks visibly here. And the service port caps were nice and tight. And we're low on refrigerant. Temperature equals pressure and it's not 37 degrees out. It's more like 72, 74. Okay. The system came factory charged with a little over six pounds, six point one seven pounds, and that's indicated by the uh, the, the the rating plate on the, the cover there. Uh, on ductless systems, you don't have to add or subtract any amount. Whatever it came factory charged is engineered for that amount, and that's what it needs. Okay. So if you had three systems in place and you had you know hundred feet of the stuff or twenty feet of it, doesn't really matter. It, doesn't matter. it handles it automatically. Right. So. But you're very low. You know, there's, uh, in my world, there's a thing called temperature equals pressure. So right now it's not 37 degrees, but it thinks it is. <laughs> right, right. Because right. temperature equals pressure. So it's around 70, 75 degrees, a little bit warmer inside, but, you know, it's low. So back to the leaks. When your system is low in refrigerant, uh, it means you have a leak. It's a hermetically sealed system, or it should be a hermetically sealed system, and it doesn't get used. So there's five things we can do. I'm gonna give you. I, I'm gonna explain all five of them to you, so you know what exactly what I'm talking about, and you can't say I didn't tell you. Okay. <laughs> Number one, you could do nothing. If you do nothing, obviously nothing's gonna be cooling. Number two, I can add more refrigerant to the system. The right way of adding more refrigerant to the system is to suck out or recover what's in the machine now, weigh that out, and then weigh in the exact charge. Okay, and that takes time, but that's the right way of doing it. Or we could just add until we think it's a good amount. Number three. We can add a refrigerant and we can add a sealant to the system. They make sealants, uh, which I don't recommend, but we can do it, uh, that are designed to seal up small leaks. It also incorporates an ultraviolet dye. That way we can look for the dye if, it, if and when it leaks out again, and we can pinpoint where the leaks are. Right. No guarantee or warranty on it whatsoever. Number four, we look for the leak. 
time con time consuming. Uh, once we find the leak or leaks, we'll tell you how to make it go away. But it's time to do that. And number five, as you probably already know, is replace the system, which would be the indoor unit, outdoor unit, the copper lines that connect the two together. Um, you know, there's pieces here that you can reuse, like the covers and things like that. But new line set, new outdoor unit, which, and again, it's, I'm not saying do that. I'm just giving yeah. you all the options yeah, and the limitations. Yeah. That being said, if we add refrigerant, it's one twenty-seven fifty a pound. If you would like to add a sealant, it's one hundred eighty bucks. Uh, if we go to recover what's in here, um, route out, you're probably going to be about two hours of labor all in. Uh, if we add refrigerant, I could do it within the hour. If you want to add the sealant, we do that. If you want us to leak search, Daikin doesn't make it easy because there are valves that there are no valves out here, just right here, which isolate this outdoor unit from the copper lines and the indoor units. So if you wanted to go that route, I would start by sucking out what's in the system, fill up the system with nitrogen, right? And close the valves that are here, isolating the outdoor unit first from the copper lines and then the indoor units, and then come back and see what, it's time consuming. So you're gonna spend at least 12 to 15, 1800 bucks, somewhere in that range for labor and nitrogen and looking for this for this leak. Right. Alternatively, there is no leak, right? Because someone could have taken it out. Yeah, exactly. You have to look in your face, but again, if it didn't leak out, where did it go? Right. And it's not like this is a brand new install and they, they installed and they left and it's not working, right? You know, whatever, but that's where we're at. But your pressures are, are very low. I'm sorry, not the bear of good news. No, no. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, finally someone who decides to put instant gratification second to preservation of wealth. Keeping it real. We finally have a customer who decided that preservation of wealth takes precedence over instant gratification. And for those who don't understand what that means, is that he decided not to gas and go. He decided not to spend over a thousand dollars with labor and a trip charge, approximately five pounds of refrigerant R410A, and a sealant designed for small systems like he has. And he's getting a Fujitsu. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope some of you saw some insight on how to discuss leaks one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, people do business with ones they trust, right? If you have a trust issue with your client, your end user, your homeowner, right? They are not likely to do business with you. Keep that in mind. So show professionalism, but also show compassion and care and that you don't care about just securing, you know, the gas and go or hit and run. You know, I don't, I'd rather not. I'd rather do the right job and get paid for, you know, doing the right job rather than making, you know, a, you know, a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, filling them up with Freon. Have a nice day. I'd rather do the right job or lose the job to someone who's gonna do that because eventually they all call me back. Facts. Hope you all have a great one. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. There's no cost or obligation and it really would help the growth of the channel. And if you like this video, wanna share it with someone, there's a little share button down below and you can share the link of this video with someone um, who you think should watch it. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. Be well, God bless, stay safe. Go hug your kids.